ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम ज्ञान तिरंद जनन जनाशुलता चक्षुरा मिलित में तस्मे श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट सर्पित यन भूतले स्वायं रूप कदाति स्वरंदक वंदेह श्री गुर श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णव श्री रूपम सकजात सहगन रघुनाथ विद तम साजीव शाद्वित शबदूत पर्जन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पदम सहगन रघुनाथ विद तम साजी शाद्वित शबदूत पर्जन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पद सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखन विद हे कृष्ण गुरुना सिंधु दीना बंधु जगतपते गोपीश गोपिकंथा राधा कंथ नमोस्तुते ताप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी श्रवानुश्रुता देवी प्रणमा मे हरे प्रिय पांचाकल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पवने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नम रोम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रेषाय भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गुरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चादिशतारिणे जाय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद जगदाधार शिवा श्री गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे बट एज अ क्वेश्चन बिफोर वी विल स्टार्ट इन द श्रीमद् भागवतम चैप्टर कृष्ण रिटर्न टू द्वारका कृष्ण सी टू द लैप्स ऑफ ऑल हिज मदर बिफोर एंटरिंग हिज पैलेस ही हैज ऑलरेडी 95 इयर्स ओल्ड हिज मदर वाज स्टिल लिविंग यस शी वाज लिविंग एंड ही कैन सिट ऑन देयर लैप्स इन माय माइंड आई फाउंड दिस डिफिकल्ट टू फॉलो yeah because you are trying to uh, limit krishna you know when you start thinking krishna as an ordinary person then it is difficult to follow when you understand that krishna is god he is uh, inconceivable personality he can do anything you understand that so you cannot try to put krishna in our perspective you have to see krishna as god he is achinti a inconceivable personality You follow. You can sit on the mother's lap, and they can feel him as a child. That Krishna can do that. You follow. Uh, so you, you can you all see the question on the thing there? Cannot. So anyway, I'm going to go to the verse. Huh? I can copy the question and put it sent to all. Okay, let me see if I can do that. No, when I write, uh, I have to copy and paste. No. Copy from the questions bar. Put in the chat. No, I cannot do that. I cannot do that. I cannot copy the question. Yeah, I can only write and send to you all the answers. But I'm already talking, right? So I'm going on. ओके वी विल स्टार्ट द क्लास तेषम सतात युक्तानं बजंतं प्रति पूर्वकं तदामे बुद्धि योगं तं येनम उपयंति ते सनानम तेषम ऑन टू देम सतात युक्तानं ऑलवेज एंगेज बजंतं इन रेंडरिंग द वोशनल सेल्स प्रति पूर्वकं इन लविंग एक्सेसी तदामे आई गिव Buddhi yogam, real intelligence, come that yena by which mum unto me upayanti come te te. Translation: To those who are constantly devoted to me, <clears throat> to those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, 
I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Purport by Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. <clears throat> In this verse, Buddha Yogam is very significant. We may remember. In the second chapter, the Lord instructed Arjuna and said that he had spoken to him of many things and that he would instruct him in the way of Buddha Yoga. Now Buddha Yoga is explained. Buddha Yoga itself is action in Krishna consciousness. That is the highest intelligence. Buddha means intelligent, yoga means mystic activities or mystic elevation. When one tries to go back home, back to Godhead, he takes fully to Krishna consciousness and devotional service. His action is called Buddha Yoga. In other words, Buddha Yoga is the process by which one uh, out of the entanglement of the material world. The ultimate goal of progress is Krishna. People do not know this. Therefore, the association devotees and a bona fide spiritual master are important. One should know that the goal is Krishna and and when the goal is assigned, then the path is slowly but progressively traversed and the ultimate goal is achieved. When a person knows that the goal of life but is addicted to fruits of activities, he is acting in Karma Yoga. When he knows that the goal is Krishna but he takes pleasure in mental speculation to understand Krishna, he is acting in Karma Yoga. And when he knows the goal and sees Krishna completely in Krishna consciousness and devotional service, he's acting in Bhakti Yoga or Buddha Yoga, which is the complete yoga. This complete yoga is the highest perfectional stage of life. A person may have a bona fide spiritual master and may be attached to a spiritual organization. But if he is still not intelligent enough to make progress, then Krishna from within gives him instruction so that he may ultimately come to him without difficulty. The qualification is that a person always engage himself in Krishna consciousness and with love and devotion render all kinds of services. He should perform some sort of work for Krishna and then work, that work should be with love. If a devotee is not intelligent enough to make progress on the path of self-realization but is sincere and devoted to the activities of devotional service, the Lord gives him a chance to make progress and ultimately attend to him. So, going back to the verse again, to those who constantly devote to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So this is a very, uh, one of the four important verses of the Bhagavad Gita. In fact, there are four important verses, uh, starting from 10, 8, 10, 9, 10, 10, and 10, 11. Uh, these are called the Chatur Sloki of the Bhagavad Gita. So this is also one of the important verses of the <coughs> uh, Gita. So it is also very significant here because you can see how uh, Krishna, uh, to go to Krishna, you need Krishna to help us. Not something that we can try with our own uh, individual strength. You know, this is uh, not possible because this is the revelation. Unless Krishna help us, it is not possible for us to attain Krishna at any time. See, that's why, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says in chapter 4, text 3, he says here, you know, Sa evayam mahayatetya yoga prokta puratanaha bhakto shime shaka cheti Rahasyam ya eta uttamam, the translation, that very ancient sign of relationship with the Supreme is today told by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend and can therefore understand the transcendental mystery of the signs. So you see the conditions here, uh, told, told by, by me, so that means it was revealed. Actually the word inside here you can see in the upstairs, Rahasyam. Rahasya means mystery. You see that? So unless secrets cannot be, you know, obtained from anybody at gunpoint or what point, not possible. Only way this secret is revealed if the person wants to uh, reveal it. So therefore, 
the Lord is saying here, because you are, you see that, yeah, because you are my devotee as well as my friend, I can therefore, and can therefore understand the transform mystery of his sign. So that unless a person is a devotee of Krishna and friend, uh, these things will not be, it will be restricted. Uh, they cannot understand this. You see, this transcendental mystery of this science cannot be understood. So if a person wants to actually know this science, there are conditions. The first condition is that he must be a devotee. And second condition is he must also be friendly to Krishna. But if he becomes an enemy, he can also be devoted to Krishna, but in, a, in the form of like Kamsa, he is always thinking of Krishna 24 hours a day, but he is inimical. So that does not qualify him, you know, to this. They are mysteries. So in devotional service, these are prerequisites to entering into and uh, getting the signs revealed. In sense that one has to be a devotee and one must be a friend. Not only that, also again Krishna says in thing is nine one. Can you see here? Sri Bhagavan Vacha, Yidam Tute Guhetamam Pravakshyami Anasu Suyave, Gyanam Vidyanam Sahitam, Yad Gyanta Moksha Se Subhat. So here you see, so another condition Krishna is putting the Supreme Personality of God is say, My dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most confidential knowledge and realization, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. So you see this point. So because Krishna is giving to Arjuna, why he is never envious of me? You see that? Because, because you never envious of me. Huh? See? Because you are never envious of me. That's also another condition. So one has to be a devotee, one has to be a friend, and one cannot be envious of Krishna at any point of time. See? So this is the, uh, the, the, the conditions how a person uh, gets this knowledge. You see, another verse, again Krishna says in the 18th chapter, text 67, you can see here. Now Krishna is saying again, this confidential knowledge may never be explained to those who are not austere. Another point is putting in, or devoted, or engaged in devotional service not to one who is envious of me. Of course, envious we already covered. You see, that means, again, there is another condition. If one who is not austere, tapasya, and one who is not devoted, sincere, eh, or engaged in devotional service, that means without guru you cannot engage in devotional service. So you see, all these prerequisites are there. So now you may understand, to get Krishna, we have to first become a devotee, eh, his friend, devoted to him and we have to become non-envious, we have not we have to become austere, we have to really be devoted and we have to do some service. See? And of course we cannot be envious at all. So all these conditions are important uh, if someone wants to uh, take up this devotional program. Devotional program is easy for those who are simple and sincere. Uh, if you are not doing these things, then it's very difficult to make progress. Devotional service is not possible uh, if one does not have uh, <coughs> any kind of uh, guru. That's why he says, you know, Prabhupada many times quoted the verse, Sa Guru Eva Bhika Chet. One must have a spiritual man. Why? This is explained here in this verse. See, see, in this verse it says here, Anadi avidya yuktasya purushasya atma vede vedanam svatona sambhavadanya tattva jyo jnana jo kavad. Because a person who has been covered by ignorance since time immemorial is not, is not capable of affecting his own self-realization. This is a very important point. Because he has been covered by Maya for a long, long time. For a long, long time. Huh? See that? Because a person has been covered by ignorance.
Maya, since time immemorial, is not capable of affecting his own self-realization. There must be some other personality who is in factual knowledge of the absolute truth and can impart this knowledge to him. See this point, this is a very interesting point. Because he is covered by Maya since time immemorial, there must be some other person who knows, that means he is a guru, who is a self-realized soul, and he can impart this knowledge to him. That is an important point. See? Important point. See, further to this thing, that's why Krishna says, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, he says very clearly, you know, this verse I'm sure you have seen many, many times, you know, Krishna is ordering the how to make this program work. Tadvidi pranipate na pari prasne na sevaya upadekshyanti te jnanam jnani na tattva darshinaha. This famous verse has been quoted many times. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master, inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. Now this is where the technicality is a problem because everybody is under the impression that he should go to a spiritual master and he should find. And this is where the mistake is. In spiritual life, you know, the spirit soul is helpless. You understand? To make this happen, Krishna again directs that conditioned soul to a bona fide spiritual master. Because we do not know who is guru, who is not guru, so many con confusion, especially today's market. So many guys are promoting so many things. You see? So to find a genuine guru, this is where the whole ball game is all about. And that can only be arranged by Krishna. Unless a person is sincere, then Krishna will provide also. You understand? I am sitting in the heart of everybody. You follow? I give the intelligence, remember and forgetfulness. This is the point here. Krishna is making the 15th chapter. Uh, you see here in this verse. See that? Sarvaja Chaham heard this sun wisdom. Mata Smirti Jnanam Apohanam Cha. Vedesha Sarve Aham Eve Vidya Vedanta Krit. Veda Vireva Chaham. So here it says here, I am seated in everybody's heart. You see that point? You see here, it says here in this verse. I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. See this point. So Krishna is the ultimate controller. He will direct. It's not that we try to do when it's usually when we try on our own accord. This is where the whole problem starts, you know. You know what I mean, Aunt? We out of sentiment and emotion we like to capture somebody. And usually we ended up in so many failures. So this kind of program it does not work. You see, it has to be arranged by the Lord. And when that connection is made, then the knowledge is revealed. Because the self-realized soul will give that knowledge, a proper understanding. You see that? See? You see again in the purport of this, Prabhupada is saying, you see, the Supreme Lord is situated as Paramatma in everyone's heart. And it's from Him that all activities are initiated. The living entity forgets everything of his past life, but he has to act according to the direction of the Supreme Lord, who is the witness to all his work. Therefore, he begins his work according to his past deeds. Required knowledge is supplied to him and remembrance given to him, and he forgets also about his past life. Thus, the Lord is not only all prevailing, he is also localized in every individual heart. He awards the effective, he awards the different footy result. He is worshipable not only as in person Brahman, the Supreme Personality of God and localized Paramatma, as, but as the form of the incarnation of the Vedas as well. So this is an important, you know, <coughs> directive, that if the soul is sincere, he wants to come out, some or other, come out of this material mess, then Krishna directs him. Krishna then makes arrangement for him to meet the right person, and then when he gets the right person, like in Prabhupada, then everything becomes very clear. You know, when this connection is not done, then everything becomes crazy. Then you'll be misdirected. Person is not sincere, then he gets into a lot of trouble, and everything becomes illusion. See? 
So Krishna consciousness is this is the fundamental base, devotee association. Without this devotee association, everything becomes top secret. Right? <clears throat> See, that's why Krishna is so much, you know, you know, if you really want to please someone, the first thing he does is he explains in the, you know, in the 10th canto, you can see here, so what he does, how his actions are. Let us go to that. Alright, let me see. I think it's 5 or 4. Let me go to 6. Let's see. So here, the personality of God is said. I try to read the Sanskrit. Sri Bhagavan Vacha Yashyaham Anukrahanami Hari Sheta Dhanam Sane Tato Dhanam Tyajanti Yashya Swajana Dukkha Dukkitam. So this verse, he says here, Supreme Personality of God had said, If I especially favor someone, I gradually deprive him of his wealth. Then the relatives and friends of such poverty stricken men abandon him. In this way, he suffers one distress after another. See, here, this is, a, of course, is a frightening verse. Everyone thinks that, oh, if I go to Krishna, then I'll become poverty stricken. No. The whole idea of, in, of inducing this thing on that soul is that he needs to understand that material life is not the way to go. You follow? Material life does not help in any way. You understand? So we will just go a little bit to When the, when the material life of wandering soul has ceased, or Achyuta, he may attain the association of devotees. And when he associates with them, there awakens in him devotion unto you, who are the goal of the devotees and the Lord of all cause and effect. You see this point? When he associates with the devotees, the wandering soul, you see the point? The wandering soul, when the material life of a wandering soul ceases, O Achyuta, he may attain the association of your devotees. And when he associates with them, there awakens in him devotion unto you, who are the goal of the devotees and the Lord of all causes and facts. So the same point also is explained here in this another play in the, uh, you know, this verse you can see here. Let's read the Sanskrit. Prayaye praye na bhakti yoga na sat sange na vinod vinodava no payo vidyate samya praye nam he satam aham. See this point? Now this translation. My dear Uddhava, I am personally the ultimate shelter and way of life for sanely liberated persons. And thus, if, if one does not engage in my loving devotional service, which is made possible by associating with my devotees, this is the point. See, my loving devotional service is made possible uh, by associating my devotees. Then for all practical purposes, one possesses no effective means for escaping from material existence. In other words, material, material life and you know, all these material lives is detrimental for one's spiritual progress. Because we are attached, we are so attached to, you know, so many things, you know. You know, you see, I, there's another verse I want to show you very quickly. When a person takes birth in this material world, he's attached to these things. Let me show you very quickly, like, give me a minute. What, what Maya does, you know, one when he takes birth, these are the things he's glamouring. See this verse here. This is what everybody is at. Everybody, you see, 
पट्टेव हे कामेशु प्राणेशु स्वजनेशु च आशक्त मनसो मात्या आत्मनो नार्थ हे तुसु इस वर्ड इस सेस हियर सिंस सिंपली बाय मटेरियल बर्थ अ ह्यूमन बीन ह्यूमन बीन्स बिकम अटैच विद इन देयर माइंड्स टू पर्सनल सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन लॉन्ग ड्यूरेशन ऑफ लाइफ सेंस एक्टिविटीज बॉडीली स्ट्रेंथ सेक्सुअल पोटेंसी फ्रेंड्स एंड फैमिली their minds are thus absorbed in that which defeat their actual self interest you see so it's like someone who has got a disease so to cure him the lord is to take away the disease you see the point so these are the attachment everybody simply by material but a human being become attached to all these things so every one of us has got this disease you see and then so to purify the mind of oh, our attachment the lord has to do something so how he does it so he has to take away no that's why coming back to that verse is now you see here it i think it was what 8 so therefore the lord has to detach us from this so called wealth which is the cause of all these things so then the relatives and friend of such a poverty stricken man abandon him in this way suffers one distress of another so this distress is actually beneficial for the conditioned soul why is it beneficial this is another point krishna makes you see the whole idea of this whole thing is this sayada vit vit odyo yogo nirvinaha syat dane haya matpare krita maitrasya karise mat anugraham why this is the fact when you become frustrated in attempts to make money and instead you say this is the point instead so this instead be friends my devotees I bestow my special mercy upon him. This is the conclusion. This is actually the conclusion. So when he can, when he, when he, you know, he finds all his so-called material friends and money and everything is snatched away, and he feels so miserable, you know, then he goes to the devotees. Because when he has all these things, he never come to the temple. He never associates there. We see many cases. so people who are very very rich don't patronize us practically no only the meek and humble they come this is the point why because that's the natural tendency when a person is miserable and hopeless helpless then he will go that's why in the bhagavad gita you also see krishna also said the same point you know in 715 i think uh, no 716 the distress now this is the qualification because unless a person extreme distress you will not go to god there is no question of him going to god at all because in a happy state why do you go to god in fact many people say why are you going to the temple do you have any problems you see that's the ideology the mindset so therefore a distressed person will be humble he will be prepared to accept the order of god krishna and this way by associating with the bodies a uh, devotee association is not some cheap thing in fact it is says uh, you know in this verse here it spoken by uh, you know i think let me give me a minute
Can see here in this verse, Durlabha Manusho, Manusho Deho, Dehinam Chana Banguraha, Tatrapi Durlabha Manye, Vaikunta Triya Darshanam. That. For the conditioned soul, the human body is most difficult to achieve and it can be lost at any moment. I think that even those who have achieved human life rarely gain the association of pure devotees who are dear to Lord of Vaikuntha. See this point? Uh, for conditions so, the human body is most difficult to achieve. That's one point. And can be lost at any moment. Yes. In any moment, material world, that is there at any moment. Any moment we can die. But I think that even those who have achieved human life rarely gain. This is the point. See this point here? Uh, who have achieved human life rarely gain the association of pure devotion. See this? We go to the next verse. Again, you see this this point is also said here. Mm. The best of bodies or human body is a great attainment. Rarely achieved and it can be compared to a boat. The Guru is an expert captain for this boat and has sent favorable wind to Vedas. Thus, I have given all facilities for crossing over the ocean of material existence. Any human being who has achieved this excellent facility of human life but does not cross over the material ocean is to be considered the killer of his own soul. See this point again? It's a killer of his own soul. See how, you know, huh? Let me let me just go back to this a little bit. Huh? I only want to show you a bit more. No, let me let me go back to this. He says by the Lord, there's a verse. He says that how the human body. After creating all the animals and everything, the Lord is not satisfied, you know. But after He created the human body, only He became fully satisfied, you know. Why? Because say, only in the human body, and the living entity can then understand, you know, the signs of Krishna consciousness. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, I just want to take that verse out. Uh, Eleven nine twenty nine. can see here the supreme personality of God at expanding his own potency my Shakti created innumerable species of life to house the conditioned soul yet by creating this the forms of trees reptile animals birds snakes and so on the Lord was not satisfied with new heart then he created the human life, which offered the condition so sufficient intelligence to perceive the absolute truth, and he became pleased. Is it this point? So this human body, why is it rare? This is plain here. It's so rare because with this human body, you can come out of this mess. That's why the Lord is very happy. See, this is in this famous verse. After many many birth and death. One achieved the rare human form of life, which, although temporary, 
afford one the opportunity to attend the highest perfection. Thus a sober human being should quickly endeavor for the ultimate perfection of life. As long as body, which is always subject to death, has not fallen down and died. After all, sense gratification is available even the most abundant species of life. Whereas Krishna consciousness is possible only for human beings. See this point? Uh, of course, <clears throat> having got this, given the body, going back to this again, Ata Atyantikam Chemam Prachamo Bhavato Nagaha Samsare Smin Chana Chana Ardhopi Chana means, you, you know, even half of a second. Satsanga Sevadhi Sevadhi Sevadil Nirnam. Therefore, O completely sinless one, I ask you to kindly tell me what the supreme good is. After all, even a half a moment's association with a pure devotee within the world of birth and death is a priceless treasure for any man. See this point here? This is made here by, you know. After all, even half a moment's association with a pure devotee within this world of birth and death is a priceless treasure for any man. So can you imagine why this is so important? Devotional service is the only answer. Now we're going back again to the previous verse. And 88. I think it's 9. Let's see 10. Let me see. Right. Okay. So how he is bestow his special mercy? A person who has thus become sober, fully realize the absolute as the highest truth, the most subtle and perfect manifestation of spirit, the transcendental existence without end. In this way, realizing that the supreme truth is the foundation of his own existence, he is free from the cycle of material life. This is the point. The Lord is not so much happy, you know, giving some you know, benefits and, you know, you know, taking some, you know, you know, material thing and good, sending him home. The, the Lord, the Lord, you know, he explains also, you know, he doesn't like that actually, you know. You, you see again another verse, this giving some material benefit and all, this is not the, he doesn't like to do that, you know. The Supreme Personality of God had fulfilled the material desires of a devotee approach him with such motive. But it does not bestow benediction of a devotee that would cause him to demand more Benediction again. However, the Lord willingly gives the, uh, the devotee shelter his own lotus feet, even though such a person does not aspire for it. And that shelter satisfies all his life. That is the Supreme Personality, special mercy. So you understand this point? The Lord is, he is thinking of the Shreya, not the prayer. The prayer is immediate benefit. But he is thinking of the Shreya, the ultimate benefit. You follow? Ah. The ultimate benefit is what he is very much concerned. He is not interested in this temporary, temporary thing, you know. You understand? And that's why we also have to go to the spiritual master. You see the word in this verse? Huh? Here it is explained here in this verse that it's a very important word, you see. Tasmat Guru Prapadjeta Chikyasu. You see this word, Shreya? Ah, Shreya, Uttamam, ultimate benefit. Ah, so to get this ultimate benefit, therefore any person who seriously desires real happiness, see that, ultimate happiness, must seek a bona fide spiritual master and take shelter of him by initiation. The qualification of bona fide guru is that he realized the conclusion of scriptures by deliberation and is able to convince others of this conclusion. Such great personalities who have taken shelter of the Supreme Law, living aside all material conversation, should be understood to be bona fide spiritual masters. So this is the point. We have to go for the ultimate benefit. This has also been discussed by Arjuna, I think, in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita and the you know, Krishna were talking. And so Arjuna was asking, you know, please uh, tell me what is my ultimate benefit, you know. 
He was not asking for his temporary benefit, you know. And I'm going to show you very quickly this verse. Yeah, it's here. You see that verse here? In 2 7. See here, again, Arjuna is also asking the same thing. You can see this word here? Yat Shreya. You see the word Yat Shreya? See that? Where are we going? I'm going the wrong one. You see here this word? I'm just going to highlight that for you. See this word? Yat Shreya. Okay? It says here, right? The word Shreya here is translated as all good. See the word Shreya? All good, ultimately. Now I am confused of my duty and I have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me, ultimate good. I am now your disciple and a soul surrender to you. Please instruct me. So this is what actually it's meaning that the body has to come to this point and Krishna wants someone to come to this point so that he can help. Because if there's attachment for Maya, then Krishna has to first clean that out first. Because if a person is very much attached to Maya, then it's difficult to make spiritual advancement. Going back again to that verse, you can see here. See this? Coming back to this. Yes. See, he becomes associating with the devotees, right? So I also explain here in this another verse to be showing you. Tato dushanga ustajya satsu sajita buddhiman santa eva chindanti mano vyasangam yiktabhi. An intelligent person should therefore reject all bad association and instead take up the association of saintly devotees whose words cut off the excessive attachment of one's mind. See that point? Well, this. <clears throat> yes. My devotees fix their mind on me and do not depend upon anything material. They are always peaceful and they are with equal vision and free from possessiveness, false ego, duality and greed. Yes. O oh, greatly fortunate Uddhava, in the association of such saintly devotees, there is constant discussion of me. And those partaking in the chanting and hearing of my glories are certainly purified of all sin. This is exactly the point. Why are we going to the devotee? Why we have to go to this? Because we want to be cleared of all this contamination that we have been carrying on for millions and millions and millions of lives. You know, you see, this is very nicely said in this verse, you know. Yat pada samashtraya suta munaiha Prasama Yanaha Satya Punati Upas Prishtaha Swa Aduniyapo Nu Sevaya O Sutta, those great sages who have completely taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord can at once sanctify those who have come in touch with them. Whereas, see the word at once, huh? at once, not that you got some time, at once, immediate, immediate. Whereas the waters of the Ganges can sanctify only of the prolonged use. See, huh? See here, Prabhupada is explaining the purpose. The pure devotees of the Lord are more powerful than the waters of the sacred river Ganges. 
Hey, one can derive spiritual benefit out of prolonged use of the Ganges water, but one can be sanctified at one by the mercy of a pure devotee of the Lord. That's where you can see, the moment we come in contact with Prabhupada and take up his instruction, immediately we come to the highest level. We transgress all kind of, you know, material modes. That is the power of the spiritual master. A pure devotee brings us to that level. Yeah. Qualification of the pure devotee. Oh, greatly fortunate Baba, in the association of such saintly devotees, there's constant chanting of me, and certainly, uh, and those partaking in the chanting and hearing of my glory, they certainly purify all sins. This is how we become purified. See, whoever hears chant respectfully takes to heart these topics of me, become faithfully dedicated to me, and thus achieves my devotional service. So this is why the Lord is arranging this thing. You know. So he's cutting off material association so that he can come in contact with devotees and devotees will not be simply thinking of Maya. Devotees will be talking about, you know, chanting mat, mat, eh, uh, <clears throat> mat chitta mat gata prana bodhayantas parasparam katayantas cha namam nityam tushyanti cha ramenti cha. They're always talking and hearing about Krishna and all these things. What more remains to be accomplished for a perfect devotee after achieving devotional service unto me? The Supreme Absolute whose qualities are innumerable and who am, who am the embodiment of all aesthetic experience. Then when you get Krishna, then it's finished just like Guru Maharaj. He went and uh, trying to get some, you know, glass in the forest, but he, instead he got this valuable jewel, you know. And once he got that valuable jewel, then he said to Krishna, I don't want anything more. Huh? Can I just show you that verse again? Pacham. Let me get it up. Pacham. Four zero six sloka book you have to look there. Let me get it out for you. Uh, it is in twenty two forty two. So here you see how he's saying the moment he got Krishna, you know, Stana Bila Sitapasitoham, Twam Prapatavam Deva. Muni Muni Indra Guhyam Kajam Vichinva Napi Divya Ratnam Swami Krita Arjosmin Varam Na Yache. So when he was been blessed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Guru Maharaj said, Oh my Lord, because I was seeking an opulent material position, I was performing severe tasks of penance and austerity. Now I have gotten you who are very difficult for the great demigod, saintly person and kings to attain. I was searching after a piece of glass, but instead I found a most valuable jewel. Therefore, I am so satisfied that I do not wish to ask any benediction from you. See this point? So once he comes to Krishna, then everything is finished. There's no more, you know, no more interested. Just as cold, fear, darkness are eradicated from one who has approached the sacrificial fire, so dullness, fear, ignorance are destroyed for one who engaged in serving the devotees of the Lord. See, naturally when you go to the temple, definitely you have service, you have devotees who will ask you to do this, chanting, hearing, you are talking about Krishna, you are doing something for Krishna, all this thing is so powerful. See? And then you see what happens here, this is... The devotees of the Lord peacefully fix in the absolute knowledge that the ultimate shelter for those who are repeatedly rising and falling with the fearful ocean of material existence. Such devotees are just like strong boat that come to rescue persons who are at the point of drowning. See, and when a person is drowning, the only thing to save is the boat. Understand? Uh, the boat is the only way to help save the person. There is no other way anyone can be saved. And when the boat comes, he feels so relief. See? And the devotees are like that. 
just as food is, is the life of all creature, just as I am the ultimate shelter for the distress. And as religion is the wealth for those who are passing away from this world, so my devotee is the only refuge of person fearful of falling into a miserable condition of life. See, everybody has to live on food. Huh? Annam, Annam, uh, what is that? This verse is that all food great. Annat Bhavanti Bhutani. So he say all creatures subsist on food. And I am the ultimate shelter for the distress. I already discussed that. You know, the distress will go to him. And religion, for those who passed away, the only thing that can save them uh, is the is the is the, is the activity someone has done. The pious deed is what you carry with you. You cannot carry with you your wealth or this or that. So you, unless you are pious, that goes with you after dying. And yeah, similarly. The devotees are only refuge for persons fearful of falling into a miserable condition. That I means that devotees are only saving grace. There's nobody else. Nobody else. Fear, fearful falling, or you know, what is that falling down? Falling down where? <coughs> falling to what? Miserable means taking, you know, lower lower species becoming, you know, an animal or a fish or a tree or what? It's very, 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 very painful. My devotees bestow divine eyes, whereas the sun allows only external sight. And that only when it is in the sky. So when the sun comes up, only you can see. If the sun doesn't come up, you cannot see nothing. Of course, you can use your torchlight and all that. That's another thing. But the devotees, they give this, this vision day in, day out, night, any time. Because they are always there. Therefore, my devotees are one real worshipful deities and real family. They are one's own self, and ultimately they are non-different from me. This is the point. We have all had many want to do anything, huh? and this is our only hope, you know. This is our only hope. Uh, we are not going to take this up seriously. There's no question of going to Krishna at all. It's not possible to understand Krishna at any point. Of course, Krishna says those who are, you know, uh, you know, sincere. Now Krishna helps from within also, that we don't doubt that. Krishna is also in the heart of everybody and he also helps everybody. But that is, we are sincere about it. We have taken up the process, we are coming to the temple and we are associating with devotees, you know, <clears throat> and we are doing all these things and when we, uh, you know, Krishna is in the heart, he gives the realization, you know. Uh, it's not that, uh, you know, he leaves you cut and dry. He also is guiding you from within, you know, as the super soul. Uh, he is giving the intelligence how to go to him. No, but that only can come when we are pleasing Krishna. So and is and and we are not only pleasing, we are pleasing also the you know our spiritual master. That's why this is very important. If you do not uh, want to uh, worship our spiritual master then it is also become very difficult, you know, it is. Oh Lord, oh my Lord, transcendental poets and experts in spiritual science could not fully express the indebtedness to you, even if they are endowed with a prolonged lifetime drama. You appear in two features, externally as the Acharya and internally as the Super Soul, to deliver the embodied living being by directing him how to come to you. So that's the point. Externally the Guru must be there. Internally the Supa. Of course Krishna is sitting in the heart. So, but we become offensive to the spiritual master. Then how Krishna will give the mercy? And then we have, we have become offended. Then Krishna cuts. See? So these are all what we say guidelines of how to achieve Krishna consciousness, how to come to uh, Krishna. All right, time is going. Actually I can keep on going. But uh, I think I will stop here. If you got any questions or comments, you can raise them. I will unmute you all and if you ever got any questions, you can raise them. If you raise your hand, then I can unmute you also, but I think I'm going to just unmute all of you. If you have uh, any questions, then can uh, raise them and then we can share with everybody, they can hear you.
Anybody have any questions? Well, if you raise your hand, then I can uh, unmute you. Well, I think I've already unmuted all of you. So tell me if you have uh, understood this class well. Understood, huh? Very good. Okay, looks like all of you are very advanced. You don't have any questions. All right, then I'm going to stop the class here. I'm going to stop the class. If you think you have a question, you can always raise your hand and I can unmute you. You can click the raising hand there, you can see the bar there, you know, raising hand. Then I can unmute you and you can talk, otherwise there will be some echo effect, you know. All right, since no one of you have questions, I thank you all of you for coming on board today. Uh, this new system, I hope, is uh, very accommodating to all of you. Uh, thank you again. All glories to all of you. All glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. And another thing is that this this uh, has been recorded, and you can always play that back, and you can see anytime, or you can pass it to your friends and you know whoever you want to spread this uh, you know video. Hare Krishna.